So we have looked at uh, simple harmonic motion in quite detail and uh, the next topic for discussion is uh, what about the energy of the particle which is performing simple harmonic motion. So uh, let's say again we have that object performing or other particle performing uniform circular motion and uh, what I will do now in this video from here on is not talk so much about the uniform circular motion but focus our attention on the simple harmonic motion right so this is the equilibrium position O and these are the two extreme positions B and B dash the object is performing this is performing simple harmonic motion so from this point onwards we might as well ignore the circular motion part of it and just focus on this uh, simple harmonic motion we know the angular velocity is omega and we also looked at some of the equations uh, we obtained that in this case the, y is equal to a sine omega t of course we can have plus phi minus phi based on the initial phase uh, then we obtain the velocity p which is omega into square root of a square minus y square and then finally acceleration is alpha is equal to minus omega square y so let us assume that this object starts from this location, goes over here, comes back and is performing simple harmonic motion. The objective is to find out what is the energy of the partic particle at any given point in time. So let us say it is at some displacement, let us call this displacement y. So it is at a displacement of y from the equilibrium position O. So at this location, what will be the total energy of the particle? We know that as it goes in this particular direction, its velocity keeps on decreasing that means there is a restoring force which f which acts on it which is trying to reduce its velocity okay so and we know the acceleration of this particle when it is at y is given by alpha is equal to minus omega square y therefore the restoring force which acts on it fr is equal to mass into acceleration which will be minus m omega square why? So this is the restoring force acting on this particle trying to bring it towards the equilibrium position. Now let us say this particle moves an extremely infinitesimal small distance delta y in this direction because the particle is moving in this direction it is going to continue to move reach this point b. So let us say it moves an infinitesimally small distance delta y in this direction. Therefore the work done against this restoring force small work done delta w against the restoring force. Let me repeat this, the part, let us assume that the particle is moving a small distance in this direction, the restoring force is acting opposite to it, so work will have to be done against the restoring force. And that small work done for this small displacement, small meaning infinite simile small, is delta W. And we know that this will be equal to minus FR, because this is against the restoring force, into delta Y. And this will give me minus fr now fr is minus m omega square y so this will be minus of minus m omega square y into delta y delta w and therefore delta w is equal to m omega square y delta y and if i want to find out the total work done to move from o to y between the limits of y equal to zero to y equal to y. If I want to find out the total work done, total work done is can be obtained by doing integrating this between these limits. So w is equal to integration of 0 to y delta w is equal to integration of 0 to y m omega square delta y. Therefore w is equal to m is the mass of the particle, omega is the angular velocity, both of them are constant. So I will get m omega square integration from the limit 0 to y I think uh, m omega square y m omega square I missed putting the y over here m omega square y so this would be equal to y into delta y and we know integration of y is y square by 2 between the limits this will be y square by 2 between the limits 0 to y is equal to m omega square first I'll put y then I'll put y as 0 and what I'll get is y square by 2 
I am not doing the math part of this. I hope you understand this. We have to put this value of y as y here and then put value of 0, subtract the first value from the second and I get m omega square y square which I can write down as half m omega square y square. So this is the work done against the restoring force to move from O to high and this is seen as the potential energy. So this is u. So we get this equation for potential energy u is equal to m omega square y square. This is omega square y square. So now I know the potential energy of the object. When the particle moves from here to here, when it reaches at a distance y from the equilibrium position, the total amount of potential energy that it possesses is half m omega square y square. So I have got an idea about potential energy. Let us focus on the kinetic energy k. Kinetic energy is given by half m v square. v is omega a square minus y square, therefore v square will be omega square into a square minus y square and therefore I can put that value over here is equal to half m v would be omega square a square minus y square and therefore this is the equation for kinetic energy half m omega square a square minus half m omega square y square. This is kinetic energy this is potential energy. We know the total energy is mechanical energy which is the sum of kinetic and potential energy. So the total energy if I denote it by E is equal to U plus K. Therefore E is equal to potential energy is half m omega square y square plus kinetic energy is half m omega square a square minus half m omega square y square. Therefore E this term and this term will cancel out so I will get half m omega square a square. So this is the total energy of the particle at any given point in time and just see over here y is replaced by a. So this gives the total energy. The so total energy of the particle is, uh, the part is at any point is half m omega square a square. Okay. Let us look at the I energy at different look at different points. So let us say at O, at B, and say at B dash. Uh, what is the potential energy? So at O, at O y is equal to zero. So the potential energy over here half m omega square y square. So if I put y is equal to zero, potential energy will be zero over here. At location B, at location B y is becomes equal to a so this will become half m omega square a square half m omega square a square at location b dash y is again equal to a and since energy is a scalar quantity i'm not worried about direction over here i'll just put i'm worried only about the direct, uh, magnitude so i'm not looking at whether this is plus a minus a i'm just going to look at the magnitude so in this case y is equal to a in this case y is equal to a so if I put y is equal to a, again I get half m omega square a square. What about kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, I have this equation. So at location a, y is 0. So this y, this term will become equal to 0 and I will be left with half m omega square a square. So I will get over here half m omega square a square. At location b. At location B, y is equal to A. So if y is equal to A, so this will become, this is already half m omega square A square. For y, I'll write A square. So these two will cancel out each other. This minus this is equal to 0. Same thing happens over at B. y is equal to A. So this is A. This is this will become A. Again, it will come out to be 0. What about the total energy? Even without looking at this equation, I can see total energy is sum of these two. So I'll get half m omega square a square same term over here half m omega square a square and half m omega square a square so this is how i get total kinetic energy of a particle performing simple harmonic motion if we want to represent this in terms of a graph this is how we can do that so maybe i'll keep it over here for reference purpose because i'll need to look at these values so just stay with me i'm sure you're able to see this uh, these values over here 
So if I try to plot a graph and if I, let us say I take this as the equilibrium position on this side, I take minus A and on this side I take plus A. Right? So this is, say like this is location B, this is location B dash and I, on this I have energy. Over here energy is zero, so this is equal to zero. And the maximum energy we know is half m omega square a square. So let us say this represents half m omega square a square. So at location B, at location B I get, and let us say first we are trying to plot a graph of uh, potential energy. So at O, at y equal to zero, this will be zero, so I will get a point over here. At B, it is half m omega square a square, so I will get this particular point. At B dash also it is same, so I will get this, and therefore I will get a curve like this. This represents the curve for the kinetic energy. As far as kinetic energy is concerned, at O, maximum value, so for kinetic energy this is the point, over here 0, so 0 and 0, and there, we get something like this. So this is for kinetic energy, this is for potential energy. As far as E is concerned, same throughout, so this point, this point and this point, you will get a straight line because it is remaining constant, the sum of energy is remaining constant, this represents E. So this is how we get a graph of uh, this, this, this is displacement, this is energy E of uh, the total energy of a particle while it is performing simple harmonic motion. Okay, last point is, uh, let me write down the equation E is equal to half m omega square a square. Okay. So this is the equation for the total energy. Now, omega is equal to 2 pi upon time period which is 2 pi upon n where n is frequency the number of oscillations the number of oscillations completed completed in one second or a unit time so this is 2 pi n so if I put the value of omega as 2 pi n I'll get the equation E as half m 2 pi n so this will become 4 pi square n square a square and that will be equal to 2 m to 2 is opposed to 2 m pi square n square a square. 2 m pi square, these are constants, so I can write down E is proportional to n square a square. And what this means is the total energy of the particle performing simple harmonic, uh, simple harmonic motion is proportional to the square of the frequency and the square of the amplitude. Meaning that if there is a small increase in amplitude, the, in the, the total energy increases rapidly by square. Similarly, if its frequency increases, that means it is able, if it is able to complete more oscillations, if it oscillates faster, frequency will increase and energy will increase. Similarly, if its amplitude increases, keeping the, velo keeping the angular velocity same, energy will increase. So this is the important relationship between frequency and amplitude uh, with reference to energy. And we use this equation or we use these relations in various waveforms, even in sound energy, we know that if the amplitude of the wave increases, the intensity of the sound increases. So this is this is seen in wave, waves also. Okay, I am sure now you have got uh, a good idea about the energy of a particle performing simple harmonic motion. Remember kinetic energy is half m omega square y square and the kinetic energy is half m omega square a square minus half m omega square y square and but the total energy remains half m omega square a square. In the next video we will look at the, the graph that we will get for different types of simple harmonic motion right? and in that we will be looking at energy of a particle and how the graph changes for those particles. Thank you.